Have you ever wondered what early optical discs looked like? <laughs> well, okay, how about a brief history of optical discs? Great! An optical disc is usually a circular flat disc which stores information, usually audio, video, data, and programs. With that out of the way, let's go. I saw Jesus walking down the street. One historical use of optical disc was when these free dudes used a beam of light and a glass disc to record sound in 1884. While another, more commercial, if you will, optical disc was the Lisch Tornell Gell, an electric organ developed in the 1930s by Edwin Wettel, which used tone generation controlled by glassy rotating slices in front of photocells. Now these early days of optical discs are really confusing, with information leaking into others overlapping each other. But basically, a patent was given in 1961 and 1969 to David Paul Gregg for him inventing the first, I guess, real optical disc in 1959. While James T. Russell has been credited to be the first to record a digital signal on an optical transparent foil while being lit from behind by a high-power halogen lamp. These early optical discs were good. But it wasn't until 1969 that Philips research physicist Pieter Kramer in the Netherlands invented an optical video disc which had a reflective mode and a protective layer to be read by a focused laser beam. This patent would be filed in 1972 and issued in 1991. But what could come from this? This is a fucking laser disc. Laser disc, originally known as DiscoVision, was based on the Pieter Grammer optical disc and was originally released in the United States in 1978. Laser discs had the capabilities for a higher quality video and audio compared to VHS and Betamax, for the high cost of the system, lackluster titles, and no ability to record TV programs. Also, the fact it's a big giant disc made it not very widespread in North America. However, it was much more popular in Japan and affluent regions of Southeast Asia, becoming the most prevalent rental video medium in Hong Kong during the 1990s. This concept would later be the foundation used for <laughs> In 1979, Philips and Sony and Consortium developed what we call the CD. This format was smaller, had less storage space, and only did audio, but was extremely successful because of its convenience and, well, the quality didn't get worse the more you used it, like cassettes and records would. In 1984, Sony and Denon introduced the CD-ROM, which was adapted to play any form of digital data. During this time, Laserdisc was given a higher capacity variant and did better. In the late 80s to early 90s, Optex Inc. built an erasable digital video disc system and promised a death of tape, yet was never marketed. But maybe they were on to something with ending tapes. In 1995, Sony, Philips, Toshiba, and Panasonic developed what is now known as the DVD, the second generation of the optical disc. It was soon discovered that magnetic discs had limited storing techniques to store large amounts of data, while optical means could have large storing devices, which gave rise to optical discs. In the mid-1980s, Philips and Sony developed the first CDs with these storing capabilities. If you want more information on the specs of the disc, go to this Wikipedia page. Anyway, where were we? Wow, the internet's really fun now! Between 2000 and 2006, Blu-ray was being developed, and by 2006, was released. Another high-definition disc, called HD DVD, tried to compete with Blu-ray, but failed. I'm a spooky robot, and I make secret calculations behind your back. Super Video CD is like a slightly worse DVD. Magneto Optical Drive is a drive with an optical disc in it. 
What the hell is DVD audio and who cares? The GameCube is cool and many DVDs are cool. The PSP uses a very weird system.